Oh, hello. Yeah. Red Bull Jumping Day from one of my favourite things in the whole world, dumplings. Out in the dining room, Jens dad has already made a start of the filling for the dumplings. So there's the fennel going in. Yeah, and the uh, uh, mince. And mince. 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 Is it mince. pork? Pork? Yes. Yeah, oh. Okay, I'll show you how to do this. Yeah. You just use your spit. The shape of the dumpling is very simple, isn't it? The shape of dumpling is actually, when you see it, when I close it, yeah. it looks like a Chinese uh, golden ingot. Yes. That was currency in old times. Basically, it's money. So that's why we say if you eat more dumplings, you can make more money. I'm going to make more money. You've got a lot of filling in there as well. They're not mean dumplings. I'm going to turn your hands off. Yeah, it's a bit difficult at this time when we try this. Yeah, that one is great. <laughs> we tend to put it this way in a circle. That means reunion to us. So traditional. Yes. In, in Chinese culture, isn't it? Especially in this time, Chinese New Year. Magical. Ah, I've got the grip now. That's it. <laughs> she loves it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, she was a dumb one. She did that one. It's more than cause more than one. No, it's not. That was coffee. That's what's up. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. In the old times, we used to put a coin inside. So anyone in the family eats that one, it means this person gets the best luck. So that's the magic dumpling. So yeah, but this. In England, yeah. we have a tradition about yeah. putting a coin in the Christmas pudding. Wow. <laughs> so, that's <laughs> awesome. Awesome. so whoever gets the Christmas pudding, yeah. Nowadays, we consider a hygienic part, then we change it with peanuts. Ah, yeah. But what happens if you've had too much by Joe to drink and you just eat your peanuts? <laughs> That's why we're going to put a few brothers. Yeah. Just... Sang about. Jens' mum puts the peanut in the lucky dump and pops it on the plate. Now, oh. we're ready to cook it. Just shake it on that. <laughs> While the dumplings are steaming away, Yan Tan, Yan Ping, is cooking the rest of dinner. Looks like it's going to be quite a feast. But there's still work to be done. Do you lend a hand laying the table ready for the big meal? This is magnificent. Just tell us what's on the table. It's fantastic. So normally in the New Year and the Eve dinner like this, we must have a fish here. It also has the similar pronunciation of extra wealth in the fish. So yes. Okay. It means every year we have wealth. Apart from that, we also should have chicken, duck, beef, pork, everything, toast, budget also. It means the plenty and rich life. Yeah. What is you know, of course, we brought by Joe. What? Is this a good one? Have we done all Thomas? What an honor to be part of Jens family New Year celebrations. We've made this feel right at home. The dumplings are going down at great, and the drink is starting to flow. This is Lamb Lamb Waltz. Well, it's time for the toast. Traditionally, around the Chinese table, the toast goes to the host, and Yen, I think it's your uncle who's going to make the toast tonight.
Kong, there's a different kind of New Year's Eve ceremony that takes place at the Wong Tai Sin Temple. Nestled in the heart of the only landlocked district in Hong Kong is the astonishing Wong Tai Sin Temple, which is home to three religions, Taoism, Confucianism and Buddhism. This is one of the most popular temples in Hong Kong and it draws huge numbers of people here every single day. But on New Year's Eve, this place is absolutely heaving. There could be as many as 100,000 people here in the evening. People come here every day to make an offering of incense sticks and to pray. But on New Year's Eve, it's a particularly important day to come and to ask for health and good fortune for the coming year. What really brings the crowds to Wong Tai Sin is the chance to have their fortune told according to an ancient practice known as Tao Sim. To tell your fortune, you have to take a bamboo vessel filled with a hundred prayer sticks and shake it until one falls out. That numbered stick is then interpreted by a fortune teller. To take me through the process, I'm meeting Wilson Orr, who has worked here for the past 30 years. Okay. Yeah. You can tell talk. Yeah. But for your name. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's going to be the secret. You have no idea what I'm asking. And this is a number I always like. Ah, oh, that I like to hear. 17. So number 17. Now, usually my numbered stick would be read by a fortune teller. But this is Hong Kong, a city where tradition meets technology like nowhere else on earth. And my fortune is going to be told by a machine. So is this it? Yeah, it's just a machine. Well, in the uh, old days, if you want the answer, we have the, of course, we have the, but now we're using some technology to help to make life easy. But, and, and, and your God doesn't mind? Uh, no, no. All you have to do is touch a sensor, start printing it. Do they really? Yeah. <laughs> so there it is. That is the answer to my question. I'd love to tell you what it says, but it's a secret. The temple might seem tranquil today, but tonight on New Year's Eve, it's a completely different story. Thousands of people are queuing up outside the temple gates, getting ready to burn incense and make their wishes to bring good fortune for the coming year. The crowd are already gathering for this, the most auspicious time of the New Year's celebrations here in Hong Kong. Do you think this year is going to be a good year for monkeys? Yes. You do? Good luck on monkey. Good luck for the yes. monkey. Well, now that I've met you, I think I'm, everything is going to be fine. Yes. Thank you. Everybody. <laughs> so how long have you been here so that you are at the front of the queue? Um, really? So you're going to queue for 10 hours, it's that important? the lady in pink that I particularly like. She's got this sort of very fluffy, rather friendly looking cat on her sweatshirt, but her face says, no one messes with me. Now, the cat is really pushing forward. There's going to be this almighty shove, I think, to get to the front of the queue. I'm wondering if my wish earlier on at this temple was for the bit that I don't think. <laughs> This evening, the is at nine, 
and being the first to enter and make an offering is considered particularly lucky. These worshippers will stop at nothing to the town. Is it like this every year? It's every year. Once they're inside, worshippers collect incense sticks. The crowd's moving through with their unlit sticks, going through here and getting them lit. And then they're walking back up towards the temple. The sticks are placed at the temple's altars, whilst they wish for good fortune in the new year. The incense smoke carries their messages to the gods. For those most dedicated to attracting good luck, there's the chance to make an especially auspicious offering on the stroke of midnight. The crowd here are waiting patiently. Many of them have been here for five or six hours. Here they come. It's a real tangible sense of joy and achievement that they've made it. This clearly matters so much. Wherever you may be in China, this is the most celebrated date of the year, from traditional family reunions. In our next episode, we will see. The Spring Festival has its own in China. They travel home for the spring. Celebrating the Chinese New Year Hong Kong style and enjoying the day's art. It's loud, it's noisy, it's a carnival atmosphere. Everyone's dancing. He doesn't stop. In and amongst the glitzy buildings that line Victoria Harbour are older colonial buildings that were once the headquarters of the British administration that ran Hong Kong. On the 1st of June, Hong Kong was formerly part of China, 
und wir noch ein bisschen zu sitzen. Although it shares many cultural traits with China, as a global center of finance and with its international history, Hong Kong has always maintained. The region of Hong Kong is on the southern coast of China. An area composed of more than 250 pieces, the urban core of Hong Kong is a Hong is the Chinese word for harbor. Hong means fragrant or picturesque. And indeed, before this became the metropolis it is today, it would have been very picturesque, tiny little fishing community. Now it's an entirely different sort of picturesque. This is one of the most recognized and photographed skylines in the world. Hong Kong was a virtual city. Because of its geography, its space is opportunity, which means it had one of the highest locations in the world. Seven thousand Today, Hong Kong has over 460 skyscrapers 100 meters or taller. London, just 49. And its tallest is the International Commerce Center. You could take the shard, put Nelson's column on top three times, and it would still be smaller. Hong Kong is also one of the world's most important financial centers. It's home to there are more Rolls Royces per person in Hong Kong than any other city in the world. Plus, last year, one local businessman bought a diamond ring for 32 million pounds. It was for his seven-year-old daughter. Since 1990, Hong Kong has been run as a central of the region of China, but with its own government. Unlike the mainland, Cantonese and a fiercely proud of their culture, language, and especially cuisine. So varied is the food here that people fondly joke the Cantonese will eat anything with four legs that isn't a table. With such energy, enthusiasm. sheer expenditure as Hong Kong. Despite its modern foods, Hong Kong still respects ancient customs of Chinese New Year, especially about the Russian food. You can be certain of finding one food in any of it. Here in Beijing, noodles are on almost every end. If you're the manufacturer of instant noodles, then you're onto a good thing. The Chinese consume more instant noodles than any other nation in the world, getting through 40 billion packs a year. But noodles are more than just a of the culture. Chinese archaeologists even discovered them in the ruins of a 4,000 year old house. They're particularly important for birthdays and Chinese New Year. Well, one noodle in particular, and that is the longevity noodle because it's supposed to symbolize long life. Now, don't think of a longevity noodle as a sort of single strand like spaghetti. It's actually made in one enormously long length, and producing them is quite an art. The longer the noodle, the more luck and long life you get. So I chop Power outside Beijing, meet Chef Yu Yu, holder of the Shanghai Great World Guinness Record for the longest handmade noodle. Ni hua. Good morning, Mr. Liu. How are you? So, what type of flour are you using here? I use this is, um, small mai mian fen. Only small mai mian fen's length is enough to achieve what I want to achieve. You've got some big mixing machines, but are the best noodles always made by hand? This is the best noodles. Because the 
，嗯，用手工和面才可以感有自己的感觉。这个有时候做面，机器是不能完全替代人的，因为它有一个感觉在里面，就是用心去体会的那个面。Making longevity noodles requires not only skill but patience as well. And two hours later, we're ready to roll. I wonder what Paul Hollywood would make of this technique. That. Alright. All the way along. Yeah. After a lot of rolling, you end up with something much longer. So our dough has been rolled, rested, rolled, rested, rolled, rested three times, uh, and it now looks like this. And the next stage apparently involves a performance. Uncoiling. So he's aiming. Oh my goodness, this is bonkers. So like watching a magic trick, it's the most amazing thing. How long do you think this noodle will be when you're finished? Uh, 按照以前的经验，这一盘面做出来应该在五百米左右。How long was your record-breaking noodle? 最长的是一千九百一十八米。Oh, done. Traditionally, longevity noodles are either fried and served on a plate. Or boiled and served in a bowl with their broth. So the big moment has come: the cooking of the chocolate noodle. And according to the the amount of noodle you put in is determined by the size of the bowl. So if it's too many centimeters of noodle, you're way off. It's four meters. That's the chocolate. Yeah. 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 So I'd better have a go at slurping mine whole. Really? Mm. Okay, here goes. So happy New Year slurp. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not just noodles that feature as part of the New Year celebrations. One of the most popular dishes during the festive period is fish. Throughout the holidays, Hong Kong's fish markets go into overdrive. This is Aberdeen Fish Market. It's the biggest wholesale fish market in the whole of Hong Kong. And it's always busy, but in the run up to New Year, the fish that's sold here will go out to hotels, restaurants, and food markets in the city. Fish from the main markets are brought to smaller markets like this one in Wellington Road. Locals will come here every day to find the freshest fish that Hong Kong has to offer. The choice is overwhelming. Luckily, I have a guide to take me around the market, local chef David Lai. David, one thing I've noticed in Hong Kong is that there don't seem to be supermarkets anywhere, really, that most people seem to buy their food in little street markets like this one in supermarket it tends to be a lot of imported stuff but uh, at the wet market it's mostly uh, caught locally wherever in the world you go the chinese restaurant you go to chinatown there's always fish tank they always keep the fish alive as much as possible right for example the fish that are swimming in the tank yeah. they're worth almost twice the amount that are out of the water began as a fishing village so i think people have gotten used to the idea that you know fish should be very fresh i was just looking when you said how fresh it is i'm looking at there are literally fish popping about in the trays 
And it's clearly a very important dish for New Year, but, but why is it? Because there, there seems to be a lot of beliefs around certain foods uh, for this time of year. In the word fish is uh, in Chinese, is Cantonese, is yu. Yu it means uh, plentiful. And does that then mean that by eating fish, the idea is that you have a, a bountiful year coming up? Uh, that's the idea. <laughs> Fish is such an important part of the New Year festivities, and the shoppers here are experts when it comes to the best way to prepare it. Can you tell me how you might cook it? Traditionally, fish should be cooked whole, including the head and tail, to suggest completeness. And the head should always face the elders at the table as a mark of respect. Fish should always be the last dish on the menu. And it's particularly auspicious to have a little left over at the end. For the people of Hong Kong, when it comes to fish, it's possible to have any number of species on their table. There's a community in northern China that has to go to extraordinary lengths to catch fish. It's five in the morning. And I've come to it, it feels like the way that things are here. This is a way of life which remained untold of history. Why travel a convoy of fish in the province, 1800 miles northeast of the continent? This is Chardan Lake. Temperatures in high water in minus 40 degrees. Chardan means living in safe. And it's certainly white. That's because this entire lake is covered in ice up to a metre thick. For locals, this is something of a sacred place. And that's because this vast lake is the home of Big Head Carp. Big Head Carp is a local delicacy. Chinese believe it's good luck for New Year. People here have been fishing carp just this way for over a thousand years. It's in their blood. This meat is fed by Mr. Dunn. Next time, keep tracking the shoals of big head carp. Finding a spot here is no easy task. Shagan Lake is a featureless ice sheet. I look around, all I can see is horizon. It's 25 miles long and covers a surface of 160 square miles. That's basically the size of Glasgow. And what's incredible is that Mr. Chang just seems to know where to look. There's no street signs. There's no map. I need a sat nap. <laughs> I'm going to go 技巧的是啥 Team launched a 15 meter pole into the water. It's attached to a rope, giant needle and thread, which in turn is connected to the net. Moving up from here, they did a series of 200 small holes, which we would be seen going to the net at the right direction. Using traditional tools, the ice up to a meter is a tough work. Now I'm offered to help. On the end of a wooden handle, it's easy to dump it into the ice. You this from the holes. Give me this one, my friend. Relax. So, once they use the axe to kind of pick at the ice and create the hole, we then use this shovel to try and scoop it out. What? What's wrong? I'm doing my very best, my friend. He makes it look so easy. You can see now he's broken through the ice, water's come through. This hole's almost done. And they just go to the next one. 
whilst they dig more holes back at the start, it's time to cast the net. The guys are just spreading out, making sure it feeds into the hole. Now, it's an astonishing two kilometres long. What happens is if it has any snags, it won't spread under the ice. We want it to spread. Team of people. Everybody knows exactly what they're doing, but absolutely freezing cold. So we've now travelled around two kilometres from the first hole we dug in the early hours this morning. And this is the end of our journey. This is the exit hole. It's here that we're going to pull the net from under the ice. We may be in the middle of nowhere. It draws quite a crowd. Locals find it. During the support of New Year's trip. We've been underwater for three years. Fishing this way is a traditional method. It's thousands of years old. It's still using it today. This is called a keepster. It's driven by horsepower. What the horses are doing is they're rotating a central pivot and pulling the rope through. That rope is drawing the net from under the ice. It's so heavy that the fishermen themselves are. Okay, class is the over for today. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Thank you. Next Thursday, bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Lucy. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Lucy.